Are you looking to improve your race performance, not get dropped from your weekly group ride, or break through a plateau and increase your FTP? Then VO2 max intervals may be your answer. But to get the full benefit, you're going to have to do them right. I'm Coach Jake with Fast Cat Coaching. In today's video, I'm going to provide three key aspects to complete in successful VO2 max intervals. First, we will discuss the structure of the intervals, how long and how often. Then we will discuss common mistakes made during VO2 max intervals. Finally, we will discuss practical tips to make it a successful workout. This includes some specific tips for the master's athletes, so stay tuned. Let's get into it. VO2 max is your maximal oxygen uptake, essentially how much oxygen your body can use during intense exercise. Think of it as your engine size. The bigger it is, the more fuel you can burn and the harder you can go. Now, you don't need to know your exact VO2 max number to train it, so don't go run off and go get this tested. We can use target wattages or heart rate based on your threshold. The goal of these intervals is to spend time at and near your maximal aerobic capacity, 105 to 120 percent of your functional threshold power. This is your zone five in our zone. A lot of times in our plans, we will say go full gas on these workouts. This does not mean set your best ever power numbers on that first interval. But instead, by that last interval, you are holding a similar pace as that first one, and it feels that's all you got left. More on this later. So how do we structure these VO2 max workouts? Typically, the interval length of these are 3 to 5 minutes, but can go, even go up to as long as 8 minutes. The intensity of these intervals are like I described before, 105 to 120% of FTP, or at a power where you're breathing hard, can't talk but can just hold on. The recovery between these intervals is equal rest to work, so that one-to-one -one ratio. So if your intervals are three minutes, you will rest three minutes between reps. And then for the rest, we typically do two sets of three reps. An example of this is two sets of four minutes on, four minutes off. Rest eight minutes between each set and repeat. Shorter formats can work too, like 30-30s. Or my favorite, which I tend to give a lot, 40-20s, where you're on for 40 seconds and off for 20 seconds. You can repeat these for longer durations, such as 5 to 10 minutes. The benefit of this is you can get more work in the zone without being overly stressed. They are more dynamic as well, much like a race. So a lot of athletes make mistakes when they do these intervals. What are some of these mistakes that they do? First of all, they go too hard too soon. A lot of athletes will stand and start to sprint at the start, and that power will go to neuromuscular power for that first 15, 20 seconds. That's too hard. You just want to stand and get into that zone 5 power and hold that target from start to finish. So make sure you don't start too hard. The other thing is they might go too easy. So this target is set. They're going to follow their target. And in that last to 15 to 20 seconds of each rep, they feel strong. So they do a little sprint or build up the power up 10, 15, 20 watts. If you find yourself doing that, then you're going too easy. You should be at the end of these intervals feel pretty gassed. The other mistake athletes make is they choose a bad route. You don't want a lot of corners, a lot of intersections. You want to find these a straight section of road where you can go uninterrupted for these three to five minute intervals. The other mistake riders make. When they are riding these indoors, they will ride in erg mode. If you are indoors, don't ride in erg mode. You will want to feel these. You don't want to be a prisoner of the power target. You might not know how hard you can do it, so you got to learn how to ride on feel. You don't want to be held back by erg in case you are having a good day and you can push those higher watts. You want to feel it, and you want to learn how to feel it outdoors as well. So practice that indoors. Here are some practical tips to nail your VO2 max workouts. First of all, you want to warm up properly. These are very intense workouts, so just riding zone 2 might not be enough. You want to get 15-20 minutes of riding before you start these. Maybe you could do a slow ramp up to sweet spot, and then at the end of that ramp up, 30 to 60 seconds at VO2 max power. Just want to hit that intensity before you actually do the intervals. This will help get the blood flowing and the muscles warmed up. Not only do you want to use power, but you want to use RPE. Again, these should be done at 105 to 120% of your FTP. Shorter intervals such as 3-minute intervals will be closer to 120%, while 5-minute intervals may be closer to 105 
to 110% FTP. You should be breathing very hard, borderline gasping by the end of each rep. The other tip is to train when fresh. Do VO2 max intervals on fresh legs, ideally after a rest day or an easy ride. Don't put them in after a hard week or the day after a group ride. Typically in our training plans, we would put the hardest workouts on Tuesdays and Saturdays. This is because we have Mondays and Fridays as rest days. For the Masters athletes, we even like to give an extra rest day after the weekend before VO2 max intervals. We find that after two hard day rides on Saturday and Sunday, they may not be recovered by Tuesday and ready to complete those VO2 max intervals. So what we'll do is give Monday the rest day, Tuesday a short 60 minute zone two ride, to go off heart rate and keep it very light. And then Wednesday we will put in those VO2 max intervals. The other thing you wanna do is be consistent. Ideally you're gonna get two VO2 max workouts per week. I would recommend one during the week that is structured and one that is on the weekend during a hard group ride or even race. You will want to do six weeks of these and progress the duration and overall time in zone five each week. All right, that's your guide to getting the most out of your VO2 max intervals. If you train them right, you'll see a noticeable increase in your climbing times, your ability to attack or follow those attacks, and bump your FTP. Hope you enjoy, and now go out and run.